Welcome back to HBT American Success Stories. Suddenly, unemployed Veronica Edwards assessed her skills and followed her passion to build a thriving multi-million dollar business. Let's go behind the scenes with this visionary entrepreneur at InGenesis. Welcome Veronica Edwards, the president, CEO, and owner of InGenesis to Hispanic Business Today, American Success Stories. Thank you for having me here today. Veronica, you started your company in 1998 since then, the healthcare industry has boomed. Can you tell us how you've managed to not just keep up, but to be ahead of the curve? Every single step the company has taken has been to not only keep up and stay up ahead of the curve, but to somewhat reinvent ourselves. Because in 1998, when we originally started the company, we were actually a telecommunications company. What we serviced was your very large telecommunication companies, your wireless companies, your dot net companies. It was the booming industry. And for the first four to five years of the company, it was amazing success. But what I've always learned to do through my education is always plan ahead, always plan ahead five, seven, 10 years. And I just couldn't see beyond the two to three years. The growth didn't make any sense within the telecommunication industry. As I was researching, I basically studied and studied and saw, oh, this medical industry is amazing. The growth is off the charts. The opportunities to help improve healthcare, um, regardless of what your mark would be, are, is it just grows by the day. And as I was going through and migrating a new division of InGenesis, amazing luck that, um, that we were down this path for about a year and telecommunication industry burst. So all of a sudden, five years into the company, I am absolutely starting all over from scratch in the medical industry, telecommunication industry. It was when the telecom bubble hit um, back in the, um, uh, in, in, the, in the early, late uh, 1990s. And so I literally migrated the entire company without knowing much about medical other than I wanted to deliver fantastic customer service and, and medical care through our personnel. From creating a niche market, not just once, but twice, in telecommunications and then transforming into and morphing into the healthcare world. What are your metrics as you benchmark success? We sit around in a room, basically myself and some of my senior managers, and we'll, we will take an industry outlook. We'll look and see what, it, what are the trends? What are, what, is, what are the different regulatory challenges that are coming out? Um, what, are the, uh, what are the opportunities? Because regardless of what challenges we have in front of us, whether it be financial challenges or whether it be the economy, there's, there just has to be, I will find it if I, it's not so obvious, there has to be a, uh, a light, a path to find the growth. And that's what we've been so remarkably successful at. We really do study the regulatory and the compliance and um, the changing environment. And as opposed to looking at all the negative and just having that pull us down, we are continually looking for the opportunity. Where is that opportunity? And we will find it. Can you reveal to us some of your, I guess, best practices, tips, secrets, on how you manage to not just grow, but to sustain that growth. It truly is um, just tenacity and persistence that I just knew that the more I did, the better I serviced my clients, um, the more diversified I became, the business grew. And uh, it really is one of those uh, one of those success stories that comes with taking care of everybody. Word got out. Um, our past performances was really were really strong. I will tell you that everything that I've gained up to three years ago, the entire size of the company three years ago, I've lost and had to make up for that threefold because technology changes, the environment changes. So at no point in time did the growth of the business continue exponentially year over year over year. We have to be successful almost threefold the rate as, as the losses that we're gaining behind us. But I've really never let any of the negative affect the company. Veronica, what is the impact of Hispanic business on your business, in your community, and as you view it in the country? I think the biggest impact that I think that um, has affected Genesis is that as a Hispanic-owned company, we have emerged as a somewhat of a beacon of hope, a beacon, an example of what other companies maybe can be or can aspire to. 
I've never stopped to say, look at all the obstacles that are ahead of me or that I'm having to experience because of any given reason. I've always looked at the environment and competed and acted as if I was a big company. The first fiscal goal that I had was to exceed a million dollars as far as revenues go for the company. Those goals were years ago, and um, we were fortunate enough that at the end of last year, we finished up our fiscal year at a little over $52 million, and this year we're in excess of that. So if you want to be recognized as, and you want to emerge as a large, respected company, everything you do has to have that same flavor, that same philosophy in the business practices on a daily basis. Tenacity at its best. We're back to HBT American success stories. Capitalizing on fixing computers has made Henry Fletches a chief visionary for United Data Technologies. We'll meet the brains behind this multi-million dollar operation. Henry Fletcher, CEO, co-founder, and president of United Data Technologies. Thank you for speaking with Hispanic Business Today, American Success Stories. My pleasure. You worked in 90, had about nine months of experience in IT. You were kind of learning on the fly. And now you're ahead of a multi-million dollar company. What was the drive and your inspiration to succeed? One of my high school football coaches asked me early on, what did I want to do in life? And I said, Coach, I don't know, but I know I want to own a business. But I know that I want to make an impact, and I want to see how far I can take it on my own. And uh, I wasn't able to do it on my own. I did it with my business partner, Gerard. We had uh, no money, no experience, no customers, but we also had nothing to lose. And it was the right time for us, and we were able to go at it. And, uh, you know, if we failed, we, it wasn't far for us to get up, right, because we didn't fall very far. And that's really been a blessing for me because it's sometimes people might not have that that advantage. And I, I was able to have that advantage. I had a roof over my head. I had everything that I needed to. So, uh, you know, we took advantage of that upside and we try to use it to our, to our advantage. How instrumental is listening and being adaptable and flexible to having a competitive edge? The most important thing that we do is listen to our customers. And when we don't do it well, it shows. It shows on our P&L. So we consciously make an effort to make sure that we meet with our customers, with our vendors, with our creditors, and listen. Ask questions and listen. They'll, they'll tell you what their pain points are, and then it's your opportunity to drive solutions around those pain points. i rather have an understanding of what your need is than try to bring solutions to the table that you might not need. Can you tell us how UDT has really tackled economic challenges? It's been De definitely challenging times, and we're in a very uh, fast-paced and changing industry in terms of IT. So we've had to retool our organization, right? Uh, that's meant that we listen to customers, and customers are telling us what they need now that they have less resources, less funding, less budget. We're definitely bringing on much more of a consultative approach. Uh, and that's that's been one of the very important things that we've done in our organization is really look at the people and what we deliver to our customers in terms of services and solutions. You're a proponent of green IT, of green technology. For some people, is expensive. It cuts into the bottom line. I'm not so sure I agree with that, and, and I'll tell you why. We have used green IT to, to do a couple things. We have a configuration center in Orlando, and one of the things that we've accomplished is we've worked with the manufacturers to reduce the amount of corrugated boxes that they send us. So instead of 20 units and 20 individual boxes. We now have one big box with 20 units inside. That reduces the footprint by about 80%. In addition to that, instead of using styrofoam, they're now using corrugated boxes in between the devices. And in doing so, what it does is that actually lowers our delivery costs. So it's not only good for the environment, but it's good for our customers. We legitimately pass those cost savings along to our customers, make us more competitive and more efficient. How are you measuring the impact of Hispanic entrepreneurs on the economy? When you look at Hispanic entrepreneurs and what they mean to our country, right, to the United States of America, I believe that first and second generation immigrants have a, a fonder understanding of what democracy tools you with and what opportunities it provides. And it's definitely something that my family values and, and our business values because it's given both my, uh, my business partner and I the opportunity for us to develop our businesses 
based on our ability to succeed, based on our ability, not somebody else's guidelines or ceilings that they might have predetermined for us. So I believe that Hispanic, Cuban, Mexican, Central American, South American, when you come from countries where you're you're stripped of those opportunities, that they provide a tremendous catalyst for the American economy in terms of entrepreneurialism. I have two statements for you, Henry. Entrepreneurs are born, entrepreneurs are made. Which is it? It's a hard question. I would tell you that my gut, my gut instinct would be to tell you that they're born, right? I would tell you, though, that life sometimes will throw circumstances at people that'll drive them into situations where it brings the best out in them. And I think in those cases they're made. Henry, all of us have principles by which we work and live. And you in particular have one that you inherited from your dad. Can you share it with us? My dad told me early on, uh, son, I'm working hard so you can work smart. And um, I told my dad today, dad, I'm still working hard and hopefully I'm working smart. So uh, I think that was very insightful and it's, uh, it's resonated with me over the years. Young Henry Fletcher's entrepreneurs, like you were several years ago, are going to be watching. What tips do you have for them? There's three things that I would say, and they're all important. Number one is you have to be fearless. The second thing is we have a God-given instinct. you got to listen to your gut and do what makes sense. Use common sense. And the third thing would be, and I know that this is near and dear to our organization, is do the right thing and then do things right. If you just listen and you do those three things, you're going to find the right answer 10 out of 10 times.